Hey everyone, it's me here at Kimball on a misty overcast morning and you are looking at elderberries. I'll show you this tree. I'm going to pick this bunch right here. Look at those. Aren't those beautiful? Not all of them are ripe, but enough of them are ripe. Then I'm going to pick them and then I'm going to pull the ripe berries off. Look at, look at here, look at these. They're all over the place. And this is a very good year. These trees are so tall. I have a little bit of a ladder out here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to make tincture, elderberry tincture. It begins right here with these berries. So here I am seated in the Planet Whizbang International Headquarters. This is my work table. My orders, my mail orders for the day are done. And there's a bug, an earwig. I just mushed him and put him in the garbage back there. Uh, yeah, bugs end up being in here. And as well as picking the berries off, I'm sorting out the bugs, okay? I want just the very ripest berries in my tincture. And so here's a bunch of berries that are not ripe, okay? They're green and red. Don't want those, want the ripest ones. I'm not gonna show you the next hour while I sit here picking ripe berries off, but uh, I do wanna tell you here at the beginning that uh, these berries, this tincture that I'm going to make from these berries is something that I have made for years and something that I would really miss if I didn't have it through the winter months because I keep the tincture in the cupboard, in the kitchen, and if I'm feeling kind of uh, yucky, like I'm getting a cold or like a, some sort of virus coming on in the winter months, or not even in the winter months, I go for the tincture. Elderberry tincture is real medicine. And so it's worth it to me. It's, all, it's expensive to buy in the store too. So it's worth it to me to take the time to pull these berries off and make my own tincture and to make lots of it and to take it uh, liberally when the need arises. Okay, so I'll show you the bowl after I've gone through all these berries. The foreign policy expertise on America consisted of six officials in the Board of Trade and their respective secretaries. As far as most British subjects were concerned, events in North America could be occurring on the moon. In his Principles of Law and Polity Applied to the Government of the British Colonies in America, 1764, Bernard, ever the earnest administrator, argued that the era of complacent negligence needed to end, and he proposed no less than 97 specific reforms to launch the new chapter in British imperial policy. Okay, so here I am with a little bit of stain on my fingers, elderberry stain, and the berries that I've picked. It took me a little less than an hour, and this will be enough, I'm pretty sure, for one quart of tincture. And I also have berries here that I've picked previously, and these have been frozen. That's a little frost right there. And these will also be used to make tincture. So let me show you how I make tincture simply, easily, with berries like these right here. Alrighty then, if you are an observant person, you may notice that I look a lot different, at least clothing-wise, and I have a hat on now, than I looked previously in this video. And that is because the footage that you have watched thus far in this video was actually filmed uh, 10 days ago. I am now just finally getting around to finishing this video and my berries, my elderberries have been in the freezer. These two containers here, I got them out about a half an hour ago and they've, uh, they've loosened up. I'm sure they're still mostly frozen, the individual berries, but they're loose so that I can get them into my jars and I can make my tincture. So I'm going to unwrap my berries 
And my elderberry bushes now, 10 days later, the berries have gone by. My wife picked a bunch and she made two elderberry pies, which are pretty special. We like our elderberry pies in season and uh, just like we like our tincture. Now I've got four quart jars here. And so I wanna make four quarts of tincture. I'm gonna use this little funnel thing here and I'm going to distribute these. Oh, I hope you can see that good. My camera is positioned so that you can see it good. Of course, I'm not going to fill these with berries. I'm going to get them maybe a quarter full, I'm hoping. Well, gee whiz, I don't even need the funnel, do I? Well, the funnel is a handy tool. If not for this, then for other things. I think I can put more in there. Maybe I have enough berries here to get half a jar, half a quart each. Maybe, that would be nice. Yeah, these are still a little hard. There's nothing to this, obviously, anybody can do this. All right, so uh, maybe a third of a jar. No, yeah, maybe a third of a jar. So I've distributed these berries and I think I have like a third to a half of a jar each, which I think is very good. Now, you need alcohol, some sort of alcohol to make tincture. Alcohol will extract the goodness from these berries. It'll take the nutraceutical constituents and bring them into solution, we could say. And also alcohol will preserve the tincture from going bad. When I first started making tincture years ago, I used Everclear and then I used vodka and both of those are too strong. And when I say too strong, I mean they burn when you put them in your mouth. They are, they're very unpleasant. This uh, brandy is much smoother. It makes a smoother tincture. It's probably smoother because it uh, says here 40% alcohol by volume. And that uh, the uh, vodka, it, I think that's double that or more. It's, that's nasty stuff. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on booze. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not really a drinker. Uh, but I do like my uh, brandy tincture. So this is how we get her done. Yeah, right. It should unscrew, right? Like I said, I'm not an expert when it comes to booze. Well, this is ridiculous. Oh no, it's got a cork in it? Ah, here we go. All right. This is how we make our tincture. I'm going to just cover the berries and hopefully I have enough here to do that. And then I'm going to have to get more brandy because this 1.5 liter bottle looked big enough to me to fill four quart jars, but it's not. Although it's doing a pretty respectable job. I am going to buy more brandy and uh, top them off. But for now, that's what we do. And we put the lid on here. We've got a good, a good seal. Put the lid on nice and tight. And I'm going to put these jars in the cupboard out of the sunlight. And I will take them and give them a shake whenever I think about it. And after a month or so, 
of being in solution and getting a shake, they'll be ready. They'll be ready and winter's coming. We're into September now, October, November. I'll have my tincture. I'll have a gallon of tincture. Uh, the way I take the tincture is it's up in the cupboard. It's, uh, I've got the coffee maker there and this, so it's convenient, all right? And so I can open the door, get the tincture down and take a little swig. That's what I do. You just take a little swig. And uh, my wife, she has a little uh, dropper. You can put a dropper in there and get your tincture that way if you like. That's how you make a lot of tincture real easy. This is real medicine. This is good stuff. And if, if you make it, you will discover that for yourself if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Uh, it's kind of an odd video, the way it was uh, chopped up there and, uh, and all. But uh, if, you, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate those. See you in the next one.